there, I'm Anya from Peony and Time, which is a small shop for knitwear and knitting patterns. You can find me on Etsy, on Instagram, and Facebook, all at Peony and Time. All right, so first off, if you have been watching my videos for a while, you probably noticed that yes, I changed my hair color when I went on vacation last week. So that's why it's looking a little different today. There it is. So that was fun. So the tutorial section of this video I shot before vacation. So you'll get to enjoy my before and after hair. So there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So on a serious note, guys, I'm so excited about this video today. It's been such a fun one to film and has been a whole adventure. <laughs> Normally in the videos that I film, I like to make sure that I have gotten a chance to practice a lot and perfect um, any technique that I might be showing you. And in this one, you are following right along with my learning experience, <laughs> which is kind of nerve wracking because as a perfectionist, I like to make sure that I really know what I'm doing, especially if it's something that I'm gonna be putting out onto the internet. But this video is all about felting the giant yarn blanket that I made with amazing materials from Sarah over at Mama Knows Luxury. I really only had one shot at it, which was panic inducing, oh my gosh, because once you felt something, you can't unfelt it. So it's like, once you do it, it's it's done. Um, and the yarn is so amazing and it's up into such a gorgeous blanket that I'll admit I was kind of nervous in case they like did something and messed it up. But the good news is it really is super easy. <laughs> it's really easy. It did exactly what it was supposed to. And yeah, so you get to follow along on my little emotional roller coaster <laughs> as I experience felting a giant yarn blanket for the first time. You'll notice that there is definitely a very noticeable difference in the appearance of the blanket before felting and after felting. Both are totally beautiful in their own different ways. But basically, unfelted and felted both a fantastic option. It just depends on what specifically you're going for, if you prefer a certain look, because um, both are really pretty. Or if you're like really concerned about wear, the before felting blanket is just has to be hand handled a little more gently. Um, although honestly, I was still surprised by how incredibly well these blankets hold up. Like just with the process of knitting them, it already lightly felts. And so if you're caring for it like it is, um, a fantastic heirloom luxury item, then it's going to look really good for a long time. But if you want to have something that you feel like you're just using every day, all the time, and don't even want to think about like having to take care of pills or um, the little bit of shedding that is totally natural, then um, maybe the felting is a great way to go. It also looks very cool and I think the felting gives it more kind of like a contemporary feel. Um, I'm not gonna show you until afterwards. So, All right, so a bit of a change in filming location today. I am borrowing my best friend Jennifer's house. It seems like it does make a difference with the felting to use a front-loading washing machine instead of the old-fashioned kind with a center agitator. And that's what I have. So I talked Jennifer into letting me come over and borrow her washing machine for the afternoon. I wanted to give you just a step-by-step -step view of the process here. I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous today because this will be my first time of actually felting like a finished blanket. So I've done a lot of research. I've talked a lot with Sarah about her felting process. And so I'm feeling very optimistic, but you know, it's a little bit nerve wracking to take something that you really love, something that's like huge and beautiful and do something that, um, you know, there's, you can't unfelt something. But the good news is, even if it does end up looking a little more felted than maybe we were expecting, I'm gonna show you some cool stuff that you can do afterwards to kind of um, give it that more of that pre-felted look. So stick um, to the end of the video for that. All right, so beforehand, here's our blankets. It's nice and huge, beautiful. This is the, I have it folded in half right now, so it's really large and lovely. And there's that one by one rib, so it stretches out really nicely. I'll give you a close up here. You can kind of see just how nice that fiber is. Yeah, and again, this is what it looks like after it has already been, um, you know, pretty decently felted um, just with the process of knitting and ripping out and knitting again. So I'm really excited to try this. Thank you guys for coming along with me on this journey. And yeah, here's the before. Let's, um, let's step through this process and I'm excited to see the after. All right, so we're going handheld here for just a little bit because I want you to be able to get a really good up close look at what we're doing with the washing machine here. So. Great. So as you can see, 
very fancy with all the options here. So we are just going to put it right over here to the hand wash wool setting. Really, really handy that that has that. And then definitely going to be putting this to cold, only cold. If you put it on warm or hot, that's gonna end up accidentally felting way more than you want. So really important there. And then it's already on, we want this on the lowest spin possible. And then the soil level, we'll just put that down to the lightest. Okay, and then we are going to put in just a tiny, tiny bit of detergent. All right, so Sarah had mentioned that some people get just a little bit of wool wash um, to put in here. That probably would have been a great thing to invest in. <laughs> However, I don't happen to have any, so I'm just putting a tiny little bit of regular detergent in there. All right, and we're ready to go. All right, so it's all feeling very real. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so again, hand wash wool setting, cold, very important, and light on the soil level for that. Okay. So I got my blankets. All right, bye buddy. Just gonna put that right in there. We'll also see how well that felt job, um, felting in the ends, how well that went. All right, I'm kind of nervous. We'll see how it goes. And play. Seems to be happening, it says it's load sensing. Oh my gosh, you guys. I just heard water. It's really happening. Okay, it's all done. So it's time for the moment of truth. I'm so nervous. definitely has made each of these strands of yarn shrink up a lot while the overall size has stayed the same. I think that's so interesting that it does that. It doesn't like shrink it up just as a whole piece. Like the length and width is still the same. It's just that each of these um, pieces of yarn has shrunk up a little bit. So what we're going to do now is I have um, a drying rack that I'm going to set up. Um, the spin cycle did take out a lot of the most of the water here. So this is just like kind of damp now. So, um, yeah, after this dries, we're gonna be going over just like a handy little tip for making this look not quite as felted. All right, so as you can see, I have it all set up on a drying rack here. So yeah, good news. Our felting in the ends worked perfectly, no ends popped out, and yeah, it looks good. So right now we're gonna take just a quick minute to talk about one option that you can do if it felted a little more than you were expecting. Um, and so that is to take um, the blanket afterwards and kind of fluff up each of these pieces. And you can see here, I've done it to these three. So here, all you, all you do is you just take one of these pieces and you just pull this apart just a little bit like that. And yes, you are like kind of ripping some of the fibers in there a little bit, but that's okay. It's still totally like it's felted together so hard. And then you can see like there is a difference between like the fluffed side and the unfluffed side. So, I mean, that is a pretty dramatic difference. Um, and then you can choose whether you want to get crazy and go all the way around. And honestly, I was thinking this was something that I was going to do because I do love just that fluffy look, but <laughs> it takes a long time. And after I tried it, um, and then I saw, looked and saw, you know, compared to how big this blanket actually is, I was like, you know what? I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's that important to me to, to fluff all of these pieces. And then also, the longer I looked at the blanket after I'd felted it, um, the more I'd really realize that I actually <laughs> really love the way it looks with the felted. I love both looks, the unfelted and the felted. Um, the felted is just, I think, maybe a little more of like a modern, modern look. Totally personal choice there. Um, but yeah, that is definitely an option if that's something that you want to spend your time on. But, I mean, this blanket is gorgeous either way. So, there 
you go. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope that this tutorial was helpful and hopefully it was entertaining too as you watch me um, nervously make my way through the process of felting something gorgeous for the first time on camera, filming it as I'm learning. So yeah, again, here is that gorgeous blanket. Mm. Whoa, what is that? Crazy camera. So again, whether you should felt or not, totally just up to you. Depends on what um, what kind of look you prefer and um, just how you want how you want to use your piece. Um, so yeah, I think this is a very cool, like more of kind of a modern look. And it still it just blows me away that the the overall size of the blanket didn't change. Um, it's just that each of these pieces of yarn. Um, just felted with itself and so the size didn't change and also it didn't felt together That was one of the things I was concerned about because like with really really intense um, felting like on a high heat um, Oftentimes it'll just kind of mesh together and really shrink up and just create one intense almost like a fabric like a, a thick fabric this no, the yarn just felted with itself. There was no shrinkage that I can see. And um, these pieces are still like individual, um, like you can still move this around. Like you can see it is not attached to any of these other pieces of yarn. So that just kind of blew my mind <laughs> and I think it's really cool. So and again, you can keep it like this or you can work on individually like fluffing out each of these pieces. That is an option if you really just love that fluffier look um, but you felt like you had to felt it. Maybe if the, you were noticing like a little more wear than you were comfortable with. For me, I was like, it takes so long. And then also, I felt like it kind of um, like reverted back to the more felted um, parts after I had after I had worked at fluffing it up. So um, yeah. And also, honestly, at first I was a little shocked just because it was such a big difference from like my gorgeous fluffy giant yarn blanket. But the more I have looked at this afterwards and lived with it a little bit. I kind of love this. It's so it's so cool looking and um, again like nice not to have to worry about like any pilling or shedding. So yeah, oh, this has just been such a fun project. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much for following along on this giant yarn journey. It has been so much fun for me and um, again Sarah, thank you so much for the opportunity to collaborate on such an incredibly fun project. This has just been my dream collaboration. So. Um, you guys, I'll go and check out Sarah's shop because she's the best and I just can't recommend her products highly enough. I will put a link to um, the yarn in her shop in the description below, so go check that out. And um, good news, the coupon code for 10% off is still good through June 30th, 2017. So yeah, I'll put that coupon code below as well and yeah you have the chance to get your hands on some giant yarn and feel like you want to do that project, I can't recommend the project highly enough. It's been so fun and yeah, 100% recommend getting, um, getting yarn from Sarah. So yeah, thanks guys and I'll see you next time.